Hello. I've recently been posting a bunch of Max Script snippets to my blogspot at micscript.blogspot.co.uk and I thought it might be nice to do a roundup of uh, what these all do. At the end of this video I'll show you how you can uh, install and use them. Um, but without further ado I'm going to get straight into what they do. Okay, in this little test scene I have a bunch of leaves here. Um, these are all um, editable polys if you have a look at these. They're just little meshes, each of those. Um, First of all, let's start with the color objects script. Um, this one, if I select all of my objects that come out of wireframe um, and hit color objects, um, by default it uh, colors them in uh, in their position. This is useful for me because I wanted um, them to be colored dark at the bottom and light the higher up they were. Uh, but I also threw in the same for X and X and Y, not just Z. Um, this particular one, um, you can also set it to do um, if I change the settings here so that it uh, does random color I'm just going to hit save and execute and then color objects you can see that's completely random color or um, grayscale okay um, so that's that one um, spread here um, users based on the center of a, um, the selection will spread them apart or you can use it to bunch them together. Um, I should note that uh, this doesn't undo, but you simply have to just right click on the roller to set it back to zero, and that'll be exactly where the word to begin with. So um, it's easy enough to undo if you just if you just do that. Uh, I'm going to deliberately bunch them all nice and close together. Okay, so I can show you now the intersect script. Um, this one identifies um, overlapping bounding boxes. Um, this one also has some options here you may want to use. Um, the aggressiveness uh, is is this, um, how likely it is to consider them to be intersecting. So if I hit intersects here and delete here, we can see we should now have none of them intersecting. Um, this can be quite good if you're using the scatter object or something like that. Um, does work best with objects which uh, meet their bounding box um, shape quite neatly. Um, so that's that. Uh, attach selected, fairly straightforward, um, just makes them all into one object. If I turn the grid on now um, and go to perspective, you should see that it's um, a funny um, rotation, all the rest of it, um, which is where the uh, reset poly one comes in handy, wherever that's gone, over here. Um, this does a combination of collapsing the stack, so let's uh, let's just add in a freeform deform or something like that, um, and just move something, um, just for the sake of collapsing the stack. Um, so this will um, both collapse the stack and reset the X-form, so you can see the bounding boxes reset, and we're just down to an editable poly. You can use this um, on several objects at once as well. So um, if I were to have another couple objects um, with different things going on, and I'll just select both of them, then reset poly will fix them both. Like that. Okay. Um, center pivots uh, works in a pretty similar way. I'll just show you on one. It's a little easier to see it on one, but it does work on multiple objects at once. Click it once, and it will go to the center of the object. Click it again, and it will go to the um, bottom center of the object. If you were to select multiple objects at once, um, although you wouldn't see the changes, it would be redoing them. So this one now gone to bottom center as well. Um, is this one? Um, clean that one out. Uh, face planar. Um, let's uh, make a new object for that. So we've made ourselves a box. Um, Right now I'm in consistent colors. I'm just going to change it to uh, realistic so you can see it's a little better. Uh, we've got ourselves an editable poly. And we want to move this. And let's say we've we've made something like this. Now we know that um, this has caused uh, what I would call skewed polygons. I'm just going to, um, if I can, uh, set the smoothing off so you can see it's a little better. You can see we have uh, what I would call skewed polygons. This is just one face, but clearly it isn't flat. Um, face planar just flattens them all out for you. Um, can be useful. Uh, flatten wrap. Um, this one's useful particularly for something like UDK um, or any engine which requires you to have a light map channel on channel 2. Um, and it's a bit of a quick and dirty, but um, it might be useful if you're just doing test geometry or whatever. Um, basically select any number of objects and hit flatten map and uh, what it will have done now if I have a look at my channel 1 
you'll see that it's uh, unchanged. Let me find that. Okay, um, so that's my channel one, the normal box unwrap. Uh, and if I change to channel two and choose to uh, abandon and have a look at that, um, you can see that it's done a flatten run unwrap on it. Like I say, it's not perfect. Uh, it's pretty much the same as doing uh, mapping, flatten mapping, but um, can sometimes be uh, a quick thing if you just want to test geometry or whatever. Um, so that's flatten wrap. Bounding size. Um, there's a slight problem with um, the utility. Uh, where are we? Um, oh, it's actually already on the uh, right here for me. Uh, measure. Um, Although measure gives you lots of cool stuff, uh, it has a bit of a weird thing where if I have the same object and rotate it, it seems to think that my dimensions have changed, and of course we know that not to be true because it's the same object. Um, so I made a little one that makes sure that uh, it uh, rotates it um, before ma making its measurement. Um, and that one is bounding size, and you can see it gives dimensions, so 137215 and 137215, they'll be the same for those two objects. So it's a little bit more accurate for rotated ob uh, objects. Um, export FBX, this is um, another one mostly for UDK, but you could easily tweak it to, your, to suit your needs. Um, basically it will export to a folder if you have several um, pieces of geometry going on. Um, it will, for each of those pieces, uh, move it to the center of the world, um, export it, or oh, reset its X form, export it as an FBX, and then move it back into position. This is great if you have a tile set. Um, let me pull up an example of that. Okay, so I um, have a tile set here that I've made uh, in one scene. Um, each of them has a pivot set to where I want the, um, the pivot to be an engine. Um, what it'll do is I'll, I can select several of these objects and just hit uh, export FBX, um, and that will go through each of them, and you might be able to see them moving into the middle of the scene, then moving back in turn. Um, to a folder FBX and, and there it is, it's done those 18 objects uh, and each of those will be separate per object. Okay so view style is a fairly simple one, I tend to have two ways of looking at things, if I'm modeling something then I don't want to see any of my lights or cameras and I personally don't really like even seeing my lighting, I just like the default view, um, so the first click will, will show, me, show me that, second click will bring me into um, seeing all of the lights as, as it should be and turning all that stuff on and letting me see everything um, and just toggle that, so that's kind of a quick little one. Uh, select similar. Um, although there is a right click and select similar in Max, um, it sometimes doesn't pick necessarily what I want. Um, if I have a look at the um, script for this, I have lots of different settings. Um, I can find by similar size, um, by similar ratio, um, by the same amount of faces, um, instances, or um, uh, use the default Max select similar. Um, and by the color of the object, if I set a wire color to each of them. Um, so for to test each of those, um, this is obviously the same as this one's an instance. So if I uh, just have, as I have now, select instances, then uh, select some of the will select that object there as well. Um, if perhaps I've um, uh, this, this is the sort of the original problem that, that started me on this script. Um, if I've attached them all together, um, it can be difficult to know. Um, or if there's hundreds of them, uh, difficult to pick all of the apples. So um, what I can do is I can just select the elements and select similar will find other elements with the same number of verts. So it will pick all the apples and it won't pick the oranges. Um, um, what else? Um, the, the the bounding size and things is useful if um, if you've got lots of objects that maybe you've made tweaks to, but essentially they're a very similar shape and a very similar size. Um, then it could be useful for that, something like um, if you've placed lots of chairs around the scene, even if you've changed those a little bit, um, it should still find them because all the chairs are going to be the same. Um, and of course you can use the find by matching uh, vert count, uh, face count with at the object level as well. So it works for um, sub-object level for similar face count, and at object level there's a few more options there. Um, uh, let's leave just the final one, um, box spheres. If you um, tend to use spheres um, which are made from boxes, uh, by that I mean make a box, um, turbo smooth it a bunch of times, and then spherify it. Um, this this box is, is I find much nicer, uh, sorry this sphere is much nicer to work with because it doesn't have any pinching, um, it's fairly efficient use of geometry and it's nice for unwrapping. Um, however it's a bit of a pain than the ass to set up as you just saw. 
Um, it can be easier to just make yourself a sphere and just hit box spheres and it will make it into a box sphere. Okay, um, that's uh, everything that I've done so far. Um, as for how to install the uh, script, um, if you download the roundup, um, which should give you this zip file containing all these things, uh, copy all of these into a folder um, into your user macros folder, which you can find in this really long address here. Um, I'll read it out, but um, you probably want to just uh, have a look at it. It's uh, username, app data, local, Autodesk, 3ds Max, and then the version of 3ds Max you've got. Uh, ENU if you're English, um, UI, use macros. Uh, you can drop them into there, then restart Max. Once you've done that, um, you should be able to go to Customize uh, User Interface and go to Toolbars and then change the category to Mics. There should be a new category called Mics, and here they are. Um, either you can drag and drop them onto existing toolbars uh, like this, or you can make a new toolbar. Um, new toolbar. Can't spell it today. Here we go. Uh, and it'll make a little floating one, um, and you can drop them into this, and then dock this wherever you like. Um, so that that's how to do it. And then you you click it, and it should should work hopefully. Um, if you do make changes to um, each of the um, any of the scripts, um, the easiest way to do that is right click edit macro script. Uh, and because of the way the script works, um, it has to be executed in order to update the button. Um, but executing it will not actually sort of do anything other than update the button. Uh, so let me give you an example. Um, uh, I'll open up uh, maybe, uh, which is an obvious one. The the color color objects one's a pretty obvious one. Um, so right now we've set it to um, not use position color, and it's just going to be grayscale. Um, if I were to select these, oh, it's been a pain. There we go. If I were to select these and um, hit color objects then sure enough it's using um, it's just giving random grayscale colors to them. If I were to change this to be false so that it uses full color um, right now it's not going to do anything it's still grayscale. Um, I'll turn this wires off. Uh, even if I save it it's still grayscale. What I need to do is execute, that was control and S, sorry uh, that was file save, um, but even if what, what I need to do is evaluate all and that will have updated the button and you see now that they're in color. So um, to recap then, if you're making a change to any of these scripts, um, do so by right click, edit macro script, that'll bring it up. Just hit, make your change, hit um, control on S and then control on E, um, or just go to evaluate all and save. Uh, and that will make sure that um, the, the script will be updated um, for this instance of Max and also for uh, the next time you open Max. Um, cool. Um, I hope you get a chance to use some of these scripts. Hopefully they'll speed up your workflow as well as mine. Um, thanks for watching.